Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Cat Chats. Today's video is going to be Awkward Boy Stories Part 2. This video has been so highly requested ever since my last Awkward Boy Stories. If you haven't seen my original Awkward Boy Stories, I will link it down below. Those were my main Awkward Boy Stories, but since you guys wanted to see some more videos, I dug back into my mind and I remembered. There was more. By the way, I'm not wearing uh, mascara, as you guys have probably noticed, and you're like, what is wrong with your face? There's something weird. Yeah, I'm not wearing mascara. I burned off a lot of my lashes on my left eye. Not something I want to get into right now. I'm going to start off this video with a picture that I wanted to show you guys because I found it the other day on my computer, and I was laughing so hard. I had a really great boyfriend in high school. He was awesome. And one day on Halloween, I had promised all my friends that I was going to go out with them to this Halloween party. Another friend of mine was throwing, a really close friend of mine, she was throwing this Halloween party. And I had to go, obviously. I didn't want to because I'm not into the party scene, but I had to go. My friend was throwing this party and I wanted to have fun. I brought my mom, of course, as I did to many events. Willingly, by the way. She went as a vampire. Just so happens that a couple of hours before this party, my boyfriend decides to like totes break up with me. But I had already promised all my friends I was going to this party. So I went anyway, and despite my really bad mood, my mom really loves to take pictures. So here you go. This is a picture of me on Halloween, hours after my boyfriend broke up with me. If you guys saw my last Awkward Boy Stories video, then you guys know Doug. You remember Doug. He was my friend who asked me to get out of his car in the middle of the street. You know Doug. Well, Doug and I were actually really good friends, and one day my sister tells me that her and her friends are throwing this like glow-in-the-dark neon party. It sounded really amazing and I really wanted to go, especially since Ilette is older than me and my entire life she was always like the cooler sister. They had the coolest friends and they were like all older and it was awesome. So Ilette had met Doug at a carnival a couple weeks before the party and really loved Doug. She was like, oh my gosh, I love him, he's amazing, bring him to the party. He's awesome. So I was like, okay, fine, Doug's a friend of mine, I'll take Doug to this party. That way I'm not the third wheel with Janine and her boyfriend friend Josh. So as some of you may know, I was very sheltered as a child. I wasn't allowed to do anything, I wasn't allowed to go anywhere, my dad was very, 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 very strict. And I think I had just turned 17 at the time of the story, so when my dad asked me where I was going, of course I wasn't gonna say to a glow-in-the-dark party with my 25-year-old sister, where there will be lots of alcohol and lots of voice, I said the church fair. Yes, I did. I know. It was wrong. It was wrong. It was wrong. But anyway, I get to this party, me, Doug, Janine, Josh, we're having the time of our lives. I don't drink. Even to this day, I'm 24 years old and I don't drink unless I'm like at a party and it has to be like a bumping party. Drinking is just not for me. So at this time, I mean, I'm 17 years old, which I don't condone. I have a couple drinks at this party and I am wasted. I'm talking about like wasted. And I don't even remember what I had to drink, but I know it wasn't much. I just never drank, obviously, I'm 17, so I got wasted. So wasted that when my dad called me on the phone, I answered. Not only did I answer, but I immediately regretted the fact that I answered and hung up on him. I don't remember how the conversation went. It was very brief, but I remember him saying, like, where are you? Because he heard, like, a lot of music. Not church fair kind of music, I'll tell you that. Not church fair kind. And all he did was send me a text that said, you better get home in the next 20 minutes. And I flipped out. I was supposed to be sleeping over my sister's house, so it was okay for me to drink since I wasn't gonna go back home, but now I had to be home in 20 minutes. This is actually totally going off of the awkward boy stories topic, but whatever, it gets kind of awkward, sort of. I'll keep going. When I tell my sister like, oh, the jig is up, I gotta be home in 20 minutes, my sister flips out, there's like shoving tacos down my mouth. I'm trying to eat all the chips at the party. I'm like, excuse me, hi, can I have that cube of cheese? I'm trying to sober up. So I'm feeling really delusional at this point and we all get in the car, there's a designated driver of course, but when we all get in the car, I just sit in my chair and I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm drunk. And I kind of just lean back in the car, kind of like this, up against the seat. Doug scoots into the seat next to me and then Janine and then her boyfriend Josh kind of just squeeze in at the end. My sister turns around and she's like, hey, close the door. Because I had left the car door open, I was that drunk, I just sat inside. And I look over to the door and my body couldn't move just at the thought of me getting killed later. So Doug is like, okay, I guess I'll close the door. He leans over. I'm sitting right here. He leans over me and he closes the door. I don't realize that that is why he's leaning over me. I am so drunk that I see him lean over and I don't know what he's doing, but all of a sudden I kiss him on the neck. Yes, that's right. I kissed my friend Doug on the neck, yes. I leaned in, kissed him on the neck, and then he closes the door and looks at me like all awkward and then just sits back in his chair. Then I realized what was happening, that 
he wasn't leaning over to like hug me or anything. He was just closing the door. So I kind of leaned back like, and he kind of did like a, and we sat in silence for the rest of the ride home. We didn't talk about that the next day. We didn't talk about it at all after that. I'm hoping that he was really drunk and forgot or he didn't want to embarrass me and just never brought it up, which is, which is a good friend. Actually, not really a good friend since he did kick me out of the car in the middle of the street. Whatever, that was really awkward. I'm pretty sure Janine saw me kiss him on the neck and was like, what the heck? Like, what the heck was that? Speaking of someone I did see as more than just a friend. <clears throat> Hi, um, I'm taking a brief pause of this video to let you guys know that when I got home that night, I actually did get in trouble. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was, but yeah, I got in trouble. And for those of you who are wondering, yeah, I got in trouble. But okay, now back to the show. I mentioned this in my last Awkward Boy Stories, but I only really had two real relationships previous to the one that I'm in right now, obviously. Which was the kid who broke up with me on Halloween and William. Which William is his real name, which I have no Awkward Boy Stories about William because William was a real nice guy. So I didn't really ever have real relationships because, I mean, I was a fetus. And I was like madly in love with this guy in seventh grade. Like I really liked him. His name actually was Christian, but me and my friends used to call him Tino on the down low. That was like his nickname. So we would talk about him in front of him, but he had no idea, you know? And I had social studies class. I think it was called social studies. And I had it with my friend Eileen and Tino actually had that class with us. Well, there was a girl there that wasn't my favorite. We're gonna call her Barbara. Barbara wasn't my favorite person. Me and Barbara didn't really get along. She had a crush on Tino as well. She never wanted to admit it, but I knew, I knew she did. How do I know she had a crush, you ask? Well, I'll tell you how I know. One time our teacher asked to bring in movies. Everybody brought in their like favorite DVD and we would pick the DVD that he wanted to play and then we would watch movies all day. So I, of course, bring my favorite movie at the time, which was Peter Pan. Not the original, like not the cartoon, the one with Jeremy Sumter, the one with real life people. I could recite that movie verbatim. I know every word to that freaking movie. Barbara thought it was a stupid movie. I forgot what movie she had brought. I'm pretty sure it was rated R because as soon as she walked it up to the teacher, the teacher was like, I cannot play this. You guys are seventh graders. So of course my movie gets chosen because it's like a super PG movie and everybody brings like these like raunchy movies in seventh grade. My DVD gets chosen. I guess Barbara didn't like that. I was sitting next to Tino and we were having a conversation and the teacher calls me up to take my DVD to the front of the class so he could play it. And as soon as I get up and start walking, Barbara trips the living shiz out of me. And I know that I say that in a dramatic way, but it is because it was in a very dramatic way. I have never tripped so dramatically in my entire life. It was like perfect timing. She put her foot out in the, mo in the perfect time that I literally felt like I flew five desks. I landed so hard on my elbow that I started to cry. <laughs> And as soon as I get up and there's like hair in my face and tears in my eyes and I look over to Barbara like <laughs> She was like, oh my god, did you trip on my book bag? And I just remember looking at her like You know I didn't trip on no book bag And Tino didn't really see this happening so he was like Oh my gosh, did you just trip on Barbara's book bag? Like, are you okay? Everyone started laughing at me because Oh, poor little Kathleen trips over a book bag, doesn't see where she's going Who doesn't see a book bag on the floor? Yeah, it wasn't a book bag, it was a big fat foot! And when everybody started laughing, of course, naturally, Tino starts laughing. So they're like all laughing in my face. I turned bright red. I actually don't think my friend Eileen was present at this moment. She probably would have been the only one not laughing. But yeah, it was so embarrassing. Falling in front of a crush is literally tomato status. I turn into a tomato. It's happened to me so many times. <laughs> it happened to me at the movies. I was walking and there was a guy that I liked there and I just busted my arse. Oh! One time, oh my gosh. One time I was walking and there was this guy there who was like so beautiful. It was like the cutest kid in middle school. And I stopped to admire the beauty. He, <laughs> I sound like a stalker. But I did. I stopped to admire the beauty and all of a sudden this girl is like charging at me. She was running somewhere like at full speed. And by the time that I noticed like, hmm, this girl isn't slowing down. It was too late to move. She just like whams right into me. I do a backflip on the floor, a literal backflip on the floor. Like I fall back, my legs go right in the air. They go over, my backpack flips with me. I do a the whole shit back, like I backflip. Emilia was standing right in front of me and it was so crazy that Emilia had, could do nothing but laugh. 
There was a ton of space for this girl to run, but no, no, no. She ran right into me in front of that guy who was the one who actually helped me up. Was like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And he picked me up and I was like, I'm fine. With like cement marks on my face. I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine. This one is awkward. Oh my gosh. Okay, so another crush. And I don't remember, Chris. Yep, that was his name. It just came to me like instantly, Chris. And I didn't know this guy, but I remember I was a sophomore and he was a senior. So my nickname for him was Stalker Makati. Not because he was a stalker, but because I was. I didn't really stalk him, but I would walk through certain parts of the hallway because I knew he was there, if you consider that stalking. One day we get to talking, it just turned into like a daily thing. Every time we would pass each other in the hallway, we would stop and talk for a few minutes and then keep going, blah, blah, blah. One day I'm standing right in front of my class and I see him come up to me and he's like, hey Kathleen, what's up, whatever, we're talking. And he asks me out on a date. I of course respond, you know, very chillax. And I'm like, yeah, sure, yeah, cool. I'll go to the movies, you know, cool, calm, and collected. And he's like, cool, awesome, and he just leaves. Didn't ask me for my phone number, he just leaves. So I walk back into the class and I start to dance for Samantha. <laughs> I had Samantha for that class and as soon as she saw me, cause she knew how much I was into Stalker Makati, I see her and I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, break it down now. I, I do a whole dance and she's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, he asked me out on a date. He asked me out on a date. He asked me out on a date. And then all of a sudden, Samantha's expression goes from like, to, and then her face throws me off and I stop to look at her and I'm like, what? And when I turn around, he's standing right behind me. And then of course, instant tomato face. And I'm like, oh, hey, what's up? And he was like, no, I just came to ask you for your number because I hadn't asked you for it. And I was like, oh, okay. And then he was like, you know what? It's okay. I'll get it later. No big deal. The bell's about to ring. So it's all good. And I was just like, okay. He walks away and Samantha's like, yeah, girl. You ain't going on that date. <laughs> it was so embarrassing because we passed each other various times on in the hallway after that. Speaking of awkward, this one's awkward. So I had met some kid in elementary school. I'm gonna call him Alan. He was like my best friend. My grandmother lived in the same apartment building that he did and I was at my grandmother's house every weekend. So me and Alan were together like every weekend. He would walk to my house, we would play basketball. Like Alan was just like my, my person we, in elementary school. We, we was like this. He had a little pet bunny, it was white. We would play with the bunny. It would like go inside his shirt. We would laugh about it. We were great friends. One day, Alan tells me that he's moving. And of course, to somebody in fifth grade, someone tells you, oh, I'm moving. And you think they're moving like across the country. He left my grandmother's apartment building, which totally crushed my soul. I don't exactly know why we didn't keep in touch because I had a house phone. I guess, cause I mean, we were in fifth grade and I don't know, you don't keep in touch. I don't know. But I didn't see him for about like three years. And then one day, I'm walking in middle school. I see Alan like at the end of the hallway and I was like, holy crap, is that Alan? So I freak out and I run up to him and I'm like, Alan, oh my God, expecting to get like this dramatic performance. You know, I'm expecting, I'm expecting my feelings to be reciprocated, you know? But he looked at me like he, I shit you not, had no idea who the hell I was. I was like, Alan, like I couldn't have possibly changed that much. It's Kathleen, hello? He was just like, oh yeah, hey. Very awkward, like paused. So weird. And I was just like, oh, are you, did you move back or what? He's like, yeah, yeah, I moved back. And I was just like, okay, cool. Well, I guess I'll see you around. And I just walked away and I was so confused. And I didn't see him around school for a couple weeks after that, but I ended up seeing him at Denny's like three weeks later. He's sitting at another booth with his friend and I go up to him and I sit right next to him in the booth. Maybe a little forward, but whatever. I'm like, Alan, what's up? You were so weird the other day when I saw you like, hey. And he's just like, and I was just like, oh. I felt like Rhonda in that moment. You know, Rhonda from Friends. I really wanted to yell at him and be like, what's your problem? I shared my pudding with you, man. But I didn't. I just got up and like went back to my booth. I actually was with Amelia and Amelia was like, what the hell? Like, that was so weird. Weren't you guys like up each other asses? You guys were such good friends. And then I overheard him like talking crap with his friend and like laughing at me and calling me crazy and that I was so weird. It was just so awkward. I felt so stupid like overhearing them laugh at me. And I guess people grow up and you change, but it wasn't that long. It wasn't like 20 years later. It was like three years later. I actually kind of wish I never saw him again after those years because now my memory of Alan is like tainted. But you know, it happens, it's life. Oh, speaking of weird, I got another weird one for you. 
So I was in modeling as a kid. I was like 12 years old and me and Janine would go to modeling class every single Sunday. And there was a little boy in that class and his name was Marcos. And he had like a really big crush on me. And that's so awkward to say, but he did. He had like a really big crush on me, but I didn't feel the same way because I mean, I just, I just didn't. And there was actually like a huge modeling performance and I was chosen to play Sandy and he was chosen to play Danny from Greece. And if I had that footage, oh, I wish, I wish I would totally show you guys. I know I have that somewhere on VHS, but. I was always put in the most awkward situations with Marcos because my modeling teacher thought we were so cute together and everything. But anyway, that has nothing to do with the story, but whatever. There was a kid named Marcos. He would constantly ask me to be his girlfriend and I was like, dude, I'm like 12, so. Janine ends up finding Marcos on MySpace like seven years later, right? After we finished modeling, everybody went their separate ways and I never saw that kid again. But Janine calls me one day and she's like, Guess who I found on MySpace? Marcos. I was like, modeling Marcos? She's like, yes, modeling Marcos. And she sends me the link and I'm on his page and I decide to like message him and I'm like, Marcos, hey, what's up? And of course, as per usual, he responds with like, who the hell are you? At this point, it was something I was used to. It happened with Alan at school, Bob at the lake, and now Marcos on MySpace. I'm like, it's me, Kathleen. We modeled together like eight years ago. And I should probably tell you at this point in time that Marcos was nowhere like I remembered him. He was like a little boy with a mushroom haircut, really nerdy and cute and really fun. And the Marcos on MySpace was like a whole different Marcos. In all his pictures, he had like baggy clothes and like his hats were like all weird and he thought he was like really cool and all his poses were like. So when I mentioned to him like, hey, it's Kathleen, the girl you used to model with when we were younger, he was like, nah, I, I, I didn't model, I ain't no model. And I was like, no, I know you ain't no model now, but you did when we were younger. You don't remember? It was a stupid modeling thing. Like, hey, what's up? How have you been? He was like, yo, girl, you are crazy. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And he was kind of telling me this like in front of people. It wasn't like a direct message. It was like on his MySpace wall. And I'm pretty sure that other people could like see these responses. And I was like, oh no. This guy is not gonna make me look like a freaking idiot. So I dug deep into my photo albums from modeling and I found a photo of Marcos that said his full name, his first and last name with a picture of him like this. And then I posted it on his wall and I was like, really, you weren't a model? Well, that's not what this picture tells me. And you know what he told me? Nothing, because he blocked me. So that completes this video. I know some of these weren't awkward. Some of these were just like weird stories. So sorry if this was kind of boring. Leave me a comment down below what you would like my next Cat Chats video to be about. I kind of wanted to do one all about like advice to girls who are in high school. And I know that seems really cheesy and stupid, but I'm 24 and I'm really young. I have so much to learn in life. But if I knew then what I know now, I feel like I wouldn't have let so much shit get to me. But I mean, it's part of life. We live and learn. But if you would like to see a video like that, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. But I thought I would share with, but, but I thought I would share with, Oh no, no. Grr! Quien me manda tener tres perros? This video has been so. What's happening?